Good morning, friends. We were discussing about aircraft design, and as I told you, the initial few lectures will be a warm up lecture so that we know what direction we should take to make aircraft design approach very specific. And to be specific, we need to understand that aircraft design is a synthesis process, right? So we should know what exactly what are the components we are going to synthesize. We have very loosely talked about wing loading. We have talked about thrust loading, very initial understanding why should we uh, take a special look on wing loading, why should we take a special look on thrust loading. And in an explicit manner, we'll know as we progress. It goes without saying that if I am trying to design an airplane where there's a requirement of high wing loading, it has direct impact on the strength of the airplane, especially the wing. Because high wing loading means relatively the area is small. So larger weight you have to distribute over a smaller area. So the stress level generated on the wing will also be higher. This is one structural aspect we should keep back of our mind because as we are going to reinforce structure, the weight will go on increasing generally. So again, wing loading will increase. Also, we know that V-stall is very, very important parameter and which we have seen can be expressed as square root of 2 wing, wing loading by rho CL max. It also gives us few careful observations. One is, of course, you can see that if wing loading goes on increasing, then V stall also goes on increasing if other things are kept same. Even for a given wing loading, for a constant wing loading, you could see that as I am trying to take off at different, different altitudes, let's say row 1, row 2, row 3, as I'm going like this, the density of air goes on decreasing. So the V-stall will also go on increasing. What is so important about V-stall? V-stall, by definition, is that minimum speed at which you can fly such that lift equal to weight. Okay. So this is a minimum speed in some sense, and when I talk about V takeoff, V takeoff or V landing, we try to design such that the between 1.1 to 1.2 times V stall. Similarly, V touchdown is also of the same order. Therefore, as V stall increases, V takeoff and V touchdown also will change, will increase. For example, if I am trying to take off the airplane at sea level, which is row one here, let's say. For that, V stall will be some speed, let's say for number, I say 40 meter per second. And as I'm going high, it may become 50 meter per second. As further I go high, it may become 60 meter per second. Okay? This typical example is if I am trying to take off a machine in New Delhi, keeping everything same, that wing loading and CL max. Same aircraft we want to take off at some higher altitude, Bangalore, or maybe at Leh Ladakh, the V-stall requirement will increase. And as the V-stall requirement increases, what does it mean? It means the speed has to increase, so you need to have more power. And more power means bigger engine. Bigger engine, generally, bigger engine. Bigger engine means, again, wing loading will increase. So we see that wing loading has direct or indirect so many effects. That is why we pick wing loading as one of the parameters. 
we will also see for rate of climb, for maximum range or for different turn rate, how wing loading is playing a role or, or if it is not playing any role. We will have to see those things because for an airplane when you are designing it will have different mission. It has a takeoff, it has a climb, it has a cruise, it has a maneuver, it has a landing. And everywhere we need to see that the aircraft is properly designed as far as wing loading is concerned. There is another observation you must have with wing loading. For example, when I am taking off here, a climbing and cruising here. So here, the weight of the airplane was W takeoff. But as I am climbing and start cruising here, you could see that the weight of the airplane will reduce because some fuel will be consumed. So the wing loading will reduce. Although wing loading will reduce, please understand another thing that the density will also reduce. So it will try to increase the minimum speed to maintain lift equal to weight. Although same time W by H will be reducing. So you have to see how do I budget these things appropriately so that my design is an efficient design. And another very critical parameter which a designer should look for and the whole technology has come to handle this issue, CL Max. What is CL Max? If you recall again performance course, if this is CL and this is alpha, there is a particular angle which say alpha stall and corresponding to that this is CL max. Generally airplane will not fly here, it will fly somewhere here if at all if you want to maximize the usage of CL max. Why do I want to maximize CL max? Because I want to fly such that my or I want to design airplane such that the V stall is as low as possible. So what is the best way to do that? That I increase the CL max locally. Why I am saying CL max should be increased locally? Because I know from drag polar CD equal to CD naught plus K CL square, if I am flying at a higher CL, if this goes up, then total drag also will increase, which will not be advisable. But for some time, some part of the operation, especially when I am taking off or landing, for the short duration I would like CL max to be as high as possible, so that my V takeoff speed or V landing speed, which is just 10 or 20 percent more than V stall, is also low. Right. The question comes, how do I increase this CL max? Graphically, you could see if we could somehow shift this graph something like this, like this, although the alpha stall will reduce, but there is possibility of increasing CL max. And that is where we talk about high lift devices. The aim is to increase CL max, it is high lift devices. In the design course, we will also put a lot of understanding on high lift devices, how to select a high lift devices, what are the advantages and what are the penalties we are giving for selecting or designing high lift devices will also be considered separately. Once we understand how to visualize wing loading, its plus or advantages and disadvantages, once I know what are the advantages and disadvantages of CL Max through high lift devices. Now as a designer, I would like to synthesize those concepts so that we have, finally we are benefited, right? Another important question for a designer comes, since we are talking about CL, the question comes, what CL should I fly and what are the considerations? Once I know the considerations, I should know that how I synthesize this through 
different components so that really in flight I get that CL. Second question comes to the mind, what is the weak cruise I want to fly? Which is an obvious question. You cannot just go like this, you always try to go faster. The problem is, which a designer should understand, that if I am trying to see, I want to fly at higher and higher end speeds, because the airplane is moving in a medium, so there is a interaction between the aircraft and the medium, which is air in this case. So we have to see carefully what happens as the speed increases. And all of you know, we have this interaction characterized by low speed, high speed, different nomenclature, subsonic, high subsonic, then supersonic, and so on. Very important observation one need to have when you talk about cruise speed that depending upon what is the flight regime, the interaction between the aircraft and the medium is going to be different, especially in terms of CD, not which is zero lift drag coefficient. As you know, as I am going higher and higher, the flow will be really visibly compressible. Then there may be a shock wave at high subsonic or supersonic or transonic. So this gentleman will play a role. And there are effects on CL as well. If you recall, if I plot CD versus Mach number, it is something like this. And typically here, up to 0.6 to 0.7, we say the CD naught remains constant. Please understand, we need to understand this is CD naught you are talking about because CD has drag due to lift as well, right? Like this is CD. This is parasite and this is induced drag component. Now imagine if you want to design an airplane at around 0.85, You could see there is a sudden rise in the drag value, CD value. And accordingly, we talk about divergent Mach number, right? And one has to be very, very smart in seeing that you design an airplane, high speed airplane, so that divergence Mach number is a little delayed. We will talk about those things when you talk about high uh, subsonic or transonic airplane. This is just to refresh you that CD naught and Mach number, how it changes, and also CL versus Mach number also have same similar train, and at around transonic, it falls like this. So depending upon which speed or which Mach number, you are designing your airplane, you have to be very careful about the type of CL and CD you will be generating. Because finally, do not forget, every time you will be actually looking for what is the CL by CD you are flying. This is one of the most important configuration. For a designer, Perspective is this, if from aerodynamic analysis it is said that CL by CD, CD should be 15 for a particular efficient performance, the designer will have to ensure that by displaying the wing, tail, fuselage in such a manner that indeed pilot should be able to generate CL by CD as and when required. It should not happen that the airplane, the way we have designed can never be able to generate CL by CD of the order of 15, right? This is one consideration of V cruise. 
Another thing you understand, suppose our mission is to fly such a lift equal to weight at a particular altitude. And once I write like this, I also understand thrust equal to drag because I'm cruising. And this tells me thrust required, which we have already done. L by D or to W by CL by CD. Right? Generally, what is our aim? We want to fly such that thrust required is minimum. And if I try to understand from here, thrust required minimum, it implies that CL by CD should be maximum for a given weight, right? Its minimum is CL by CD should be maximum. And what is the meaning of CL by CD maximum? CL by CD maximum means, you all know from performance course, aircraft has to fly such that CL equal to CD naught by K. And CD naught for an airplane at a given speed is fixed at a given Mach number is fixed. Maybe typically 0 0.021, 0 0.023 of that order. And K, K, you know, K is 1 by pi aspect ratio into E. This is also fixed once you have chosen the aspect ratio of the airplane. Now see, if I want to fly at a given altitude, same time thrust required should be minimum. That means CL is fixed. Let's say that CL fixed value is 0.2. Let us say. Let me repeat. I want to fly at a given altitude rho. Such that thrust required is minimum, and for a, just for an example, I am taking less that value is 0 0.2. Okay. What does it mean? It, the question is, yes, it is true, I want to fly such that thrust required is minimum, for which CL is 0.2, but the basic thing is, it has to maintain lift equal to weight. So if lift equal to weight means half rho v squared SCL, equal to weight. Now CL we have fixed for this example. Since I am flying a thrust required minimum, CL is fixed because it is under root CD naught by K. And for just for example, we have taken it 0.2. So what we will get? We will get rho V square is equal to W by S into 2 CL. And CL is 2W by S, of course, CL is under root CD naught by K. This is rho V square. What is the message? Message is, if you want to fly at thrust required minimum for a given wing loading, then you have to ensure that rho into v square should be fixed, which is given by this number. Your airplane should have been designed in such a way that rho into v square should be 2w by s under root cd naught by k. As long as you maintain this, you will be able to fly at thrust required minimum. Now, what is the meaning of rho v square to be a fixed number? So we are writing here rho v square to be equal to 2 W by S by under root C D naught by K. But we started the discussion, we want to, as a designer, we are asking a question, what is the V and what is the altitude I should fly? These are my questions. If you want to buy an airplane or design an airplane, this question will come to your mind. What is the cruise speed I want to design? 
and then at what altitude. Now see the fun. If you are designing an aircraft with a jet engine and all, typically you will like that from the engine requirement, they will like to fly at tropopause, around 10 to 12 kilometers because of temperature being constant and it helps the engine to maintain its efficiency. So if this gentleman is fixed, then since rho into v square is also fixed, then you don't have a control over v. But you want to design an airplane so that the v is under your control. So that is where you have to do designing. Do you understand? This sort of a conflict you have to manage. For example, if you want to fly at 10 kilometer, and you are finding that for the given wing loading and given CD naught, V is coming less than the V where you want to design. Possible? You may be planning to design an airplane for V equal to 150 meter per second, but under putting this condition for a given initial wing loading and K, K means aspect ratio, you may find if you want to satisfy this condition, V is coming lesser than V design. So what do you do? What is the option? If you again come to this understanding that rho into V square has to be constant. So one way to design is if I have selected rho to be at 10 kilometer, corresponding to 10 kilometer altitude, I know this value. If I have selected any case, I want V to be 150 meter per second. Right? That is also, you say, okay, I will fly at 150 meter per second. Then the way you have to manage is you have to retweak this W by S. You have to change W by S. You have to manipulate K. You may have to manipulate CD naught as well. Please understand why design is so important. And design is not just doing something, some computation unless you have a philosophy because you want a synthesis. Please understand, if I change k, y aspect ratio, there's a possibility s also will change, possibility. The possibility of CD0 also will change. So everything goes, you know, they're interlinked. Also, you understand when I'm talking about design, if I go a little away from aerodynamics. Finally, in a wing, you will be putting the fuel tank, which I have shown you in the first class. Particular volume of fuel will be housing inside the wing. If somebody says, sir, what is the problem? CL, suppose this gentleman, some CL, I'm getting is 0.2. Now I have to select what type of aerofoil I'll be using. And he, say, he says, sir, no problem. Aerodynamically, we'll pick up an aerofoil such that it is lift efficient and it doesn't give too much of CMAC. You understand CMAC? Remember? Where we are fancy with uh, you know, a cambered aerofoil. So CMAC value is typically, which is of course less than zero, is typically minus 0 0.01 to minus 0.1, it's the order of values, right? What is the meaning of CMAC? That because of Kimber, whether it sees angle of attack or not angle of attack is not, not an issue, because of Kimber, it will have a natural pitching pitch down moment, a fixed pitch down moment. But when you want to trim the airplane, you do not like this, right? When you want to trim the airplane, remember CM and alpha if I draw like this. If I want to trim it here at some alpha positive, I need to have CM not greater than zero. But typically, cambered aerofoil will give CMAC less than zero. So I have to also 
counter that. So when I am selecting an aerofoil, one condition comes that try to see that CMAC is not unnecessarily large negative. But more than that, which is extremely important, which we miss it during our design, I am just shifted to aerofoil and giving you a little bit of warm up uh, understanding so that we can uh, progress systematically in couple of lectures. When you think of aerofoil, first of all we are picking let us say a cambered aerofoil. So you know it is a cambered, the question comes how much cambered, highly cambered, moderately cambered or it is a reflex aerofoil and that sort of a question comes because yes you want lift efficient aerofoil, but at the same time you should be careful that unnecessarily CMAC should not be negative. And apart from that, there is another important point which you should not miss. Please check for cambered aerofoil what is alpha stall, what is the stall angle. With the camber you will find stall angle will have a tendency to reduce. You should not select an aerofoil because it is lift efficient but it stalls too early because for an airplane the stalling angles are different whether you take wing tip or a root or a horizontal tail. So we have to be very, very careful in selecting the stall uh, angle uh, criteria for an aerofoil. Also you will find something called drag bucket. This also you have studied, let us say it is something like this. This is CD and, and CL. So there will be a flat portion if I plot CD and CL. And let us say your CL design is somewhere here for most of the time. But there will be time when you will be flying here as well. So what this ensures that if it is a flat like a bucket, then if I am, even if I am flying at the CL, the drag penalty is not large from the airfoil, right. But suppose you have selected an airfoil that you are flying at the CL most of the time and occasionally you fly at the CL, then what is happening? The moment you try to fly at the CL, there is a large increase in the drag. So that is an inefficient way of designing a wing. So what is the important? When I am talking about a wing, I select an aerofoil keeping in mind that drag bucket, keeping in mind the stall angle and keeping in mind CMAC. And also remember there is a what do you call a rush for designing different types of aerofoil. I do not stop you from rushing to design different different aerofoil. But do not forget the CL alpha 2D value is restricted to 2 pi per radian, is not it? Okay. So typically for a wing whatever you do you will find the values of CL alpha for wing 3D if I take it will be between 5 to 5.5 or 5.6 per radian. So you do not gain much, most of the wing will be giving the values. So do not waste too much of time in uh, customizing the aerofoil, but for alpha stall and drag bucket. These are important for a low subsonic airplane. Okay. So we will be talking about aerofoil selections also in detail. We have talked about wing loading, we have talked about aerofoil. If I am doing an aero modeling, let us say, let us say somebody asks Dr. Ghosh make an airplane, maybe a smaller type, which should be capable of flying. Right. So immediately you know, no problem. I know lift equal to weight. So I will write half rho v square s c l equal to weight. So I will take okay, smaller aerofoil, maybe five 
2 kg. So, 2 into 9.8. I know I will be able to fly it at around 5 to 10 meter per second, let us say 5 meter per second. And CL, let us say I will be flying at 0 0.8. Because how do I write CL 0.8? Because I know CL alpha is roughly I will take 5 per radian. From there I will find CL 0.8, okay. And from using this and rho as a sea level condition, I can get what is the area required. Right. right. And then I make a wing of that area and I put a propeller here and I see that total length, whatever wing area I have taken, let us say wing area is some meter square. I say, okay, for this type of wing, aspect ratio 8 or 9 is good. So I distribute this because I know aspect ratio is equal to b squared by s. I know s, I know aspect ratio, so I can have span. So I make a span and this, then I decide, okay, this length will be almost equal to this length. And this is 70%. It's not important you remember this number. I'm just telling you the philosophy. 70% and 30% here. And you configure like this. Then you ask a question, how much should be the tail area? Oh, tail area will be around 15% of the wing area. So you put a tail. 15% of tail you put here. And half of this, one of this, you take and put as a vertical tail. And ensure that if this is the AC of the wing, CG should be within 10% ahead of CG if you are taking a camber of oil. And you fly it, it will fly. All the aero models are like that, it will fly. It will have a particular speed to fly. But we will not be doing this. That is my point. So once you are attending to this lecture, if you have some experience in aero modeling, please keep in your house, don't bring along with you. If you are bringing that, this course will not be useful at all. So here, anything, any number you will be putting will justify, will cross question, and will put them in a bucket. Okay, you are qualified. But whether they are going to be used or not, that will be decided at the end. I may have six sets of aspect ratios. But at initial stage, I will not know which aspect ratio I will pick. But in my data bank, there will be six to eight sets of aspect ratio data. And those sort of a synthesis is possible if you clearly understand why you are doing this and how you are going to use this. And that is what is designed. Why and how. Okay. Thank you very much.